Hello and welcome to part three of our plan reading series. Uh, in this episode, we are going to cover your electrical plans. Uh, now, yes, I'm a plumber and I don't really deal with this very much, but to be true to the whole reading plans uh, series, I decided I'd go ahead and do a short explanation on what you're going to see on an electrical plan. So if you run across one, you know what you're looking at. All right, here is your typical electrical plan for a residential dwelling. All right, let's zoom in. We're going to start with something simple here. We're going to go up to this dining room. Uh, and the first thing is this is a, well, it's a can light. It's a little fixture. And this is a switch on the wall. Uh, and they are connected with this stringer. And what this is telling me is it's telling me they want a switch on that wall that controls the light in that dining room. Um, and it's also down here in this library study. There's a switch on the wall and one single light. Uh, now, a lot of times, uh, if this is a real in-depth drawing, they might give you a legend that's actually going to tell you what these lights are. But typically for us, they have a selection sheet. So, garage. Uh, all right, here we have three switches. And this is called a triple gang because it's got uh, three switches there. Uh, and now we're going to look at this big long leg here coming off of, to us, it's the switch on the left. Uh, now, this is not how you're going to run your wire. This is just telling you what's connected. And that switch is going to control these carriage lights that are on the garage. And if you look, that little can has an E, which means it's an external or exterior light. Now, the switch in the middle here is going to control um, these two garage lights. And it has a different letter, a different symbol than, say, the dining room and the uh, library did. Now, this symbol here, CLO, that's going to be your garage door closer or opener. Uh, it's going to need an outlet because it plugs in. Uh, and if you're the one who's running the Cat5 for the sensors, uh, it needs those as well. For the, for the door sensors. Now, these little doodads here are going to be all over this house. And these are your outlets. It's a circle with a line through it. And these here have a note on them. It says GFI. Now, that's your ground fault interrupter. Anytime you're in a wet location, like a garage, outside, or in the kitchen, or a bathroom, it's going to need to be a, a GFI outlet. Uh, but if it doesn't say anything, it's just a basic outlet, and sometimes they have switched outlets. So uh, let's go on out to the front porch here. Uh, and here again, we have another triple gang on the wall. And right there kind of in the corner, you've got another outlet. Now, this is an outside outlet, and it's noted as a GFI, and it's also got a, a box around it. Uh, these two can lights are controlled by the switch that's on the right, and the one in the middle controls this floodlight. Here again, that's not your wire running all the way out of the floodlight. Uh, and then the last switch controls this light in the foyer. Uh, so let's follow that foyer light on up. And now these are connected by those stringers. So this is connected. Um, now it's got a stringer that runs over here to this other switch. Uh, and then, of course, this other can is also part of that circuit. So what this is, is it's a three-way or a two-way uh, switch to where you can control this hall light from either the garage door or the front door. Now, these two objects, these little circles, that first one said CO and this one says SD. That's your carbon dioxide um, detector and your smoke detector. You're going to have a smoke detector in every room. Uh, you're going to have a CO detector on every floor. Uh, now, here, this is something different. Uh, there's two switches here, and it says pre-wired. Uh, and this is just showing a basic uh, light fixture. It's pre-wired for a fan, but you're not getting a fan. But you are getting a switch to operate the fan, and you're getting a switch to operate the light but there's not a fan there. It's just a basic light. You can put a fan later if you want to. Now, this funny little object is actually for your television. 
whatever kind of cable, uh, whatever in the future they've got, but this is probably going to be coax cable that goes to outside. Pay attention to where you have outlets. Uh, and look here, before I forget, this foyer light also goes to a third switch. Now, there's a four gang here, and that's a whole lot of switches. Um, so that hallway can be turned on from the kitchen, the garage door, entry door, and the front door. Now, this bathroom, got three switches on the wall here. Uh, every vanity is going to get a light above it. So one switch does that. Uh, every toilet is going to have an exhaust fan. And this is a black and white, so it's probably going to be a light and a fan together. And then we also have another switch with a can over the uh, tub shower. Now let's look over here at our butler's nook. Two switches on the wall. This is pretty simple. We've got two can lights, one for the butler's nook, one for the, um, the pantry. There's also an outlet on that wall that's marked 42 inches, which is telling you that's going to be 42 inches off the ground. All right, this um, other switch controls your two pendant lights. Those hang down from above your bar. Uh, nice fancy lights. And then this other one is actually going to control, uh, it's actually five lights uh, in this kitchen. Now, let's look over here, the family room. Now, the family room is showing a fan. And it is also showing uh, a fan switch, a light switch, and then there's a second switch. Uh, so you can control it from another location. And then these four here are all on the same circuit going to the same uh, switch. Notice uh, you got some outlets there. And we'll come on up here. Uh, now, they've got a lot of switches on the wall right here. I think that's five of them. One goes to the fan. One goes back to the kitchen lights, uh, the lights in front of the bar. Um, and then there's one that goes outside to this little light. This is a little jelly jar light. Uh, it looks like looks like a jelly jar. It's really um, not nothing fancy. Um, and you've also got your floodlight, uh, one floodlight on each corner of the house. So um, and this thing, I wanted to point this out. This little triangle. Now they used to use this little triangle for telephone jacks but they don't wire houses for telephones anymore. They stopped doing that a long time ago. Uh, what this little triangle is, is it's a technology box. So this is kind of wired up for your smart home or your security system. These are those little boxes that say, front door, open. <laughs> you know, when somebody opens the back, back door, open. Um, and this is kind of a new thing. Uh, it is kind of like your little home security and different things. And here again, you have uh, your TV or cable TV box outlet ran there. Um, and that is a fireplace. So that stuff is sitting on top of a mantle. And they do give you an outlet up there. All right, upstairs. Uh, we've got a flex room here and we have a bedroom too. And here again, we have two pre-wired uh, fans, but they're not getting fans. Those are just regular little light fixtures. Uh, we have a carbon dioxide um, sensor here in the hallway and a smoke detector in bedroom two. You also have uh, this TV box. See this upper flex room? You can turn this into whatever you want to. This could be a second living room. This could be a workout room, a game room, whatever you want it to be. Uh, all right, this switch here is going to run this string of lights that goes down the hallway here. And it goes to another light in the center of the hallway to a switch. So this is a two-way, three-way switch uh, as well. And those are different. Those are different outlets. They're not, it's not a single switch outlet. Uh, but now I'm not going to go over all of this because I think by this point, uh, you kind of got an understanding. It's, it's once you 
don't look at it like it's so complicated. But here again, we've got bathroom two. We've got three switches. we got lights above the vanities. We've got our exhaust fan. We've got um, a light above the tub shower. And same thing in the owner's bath. And the owner's bath does give us an exhaust fan kind of in between the tub and the shower there. Now, something to point out here. Uh, this is your dryer. And it's got an outlet. And it's also got a label there that says 220 because you need a bigger outlet to run that dryer. So moving on along into our owner's bedroom here, um, we do have um, the two smoke detectors. And this one actually has a fan. In uh, It's, it's pre-wired for two fans in there. The bedroom three is pre-wired for a fan, but we're actually only getting the one fan uh, as per this plan. And we have our little TV boxes here for our coax cables. And we also have another one of these little uh, technology boxes. And this could go into the future and be anything, you know. So uh, let me show you this. These two lines here. Now, this means something. This is telling me it's a vaulted ceiling. Uh, and now, why is that important on an electric plan? Uh, you know, a vaulted ceiling goes up at a triangle, uh, and it's telling me it is flat right there. It's not a sharp triangle. Um, but what it's there for and why the electrician needs to know that is he's going to need to get a drop rod for that fan. If he uses just the basic three or four inch drop rod that the thing comes with, and that's the part that holds it, uh, the fan blades are going to hit that roof. So it needs to drop down a lot lower. Well, that's pretty much the basics on an electrical plan.